Here are two examples of linear programming problems. This one here is a minimization problem, and this one here is a maximization problem. Very often, to save handwriting, we do not write out these words completely. So instead of writing the word minimize, we'll just write min. And instead of writing subject to, we simply write st. And sometimes, similar constraints like these will be lumped together. So instead of writing three separate constraints here, they will be written as x, y, z greater than or equal to zero. The way to interpret this problem is as follows. We want to find the minimum possible value for 2x plus y minus z over all real numbers x, y, z satisfying all these constraints. And here we are finding the maximum value of x1 minus x2 over all real numbers x1 and x2 satisfying this single constraint here. Note that in the case of minimization, the minimum value might not exist. And in the case of maximization, a maximum value may not exist. For example, there's no upper bound on x1 minus x2 if the only constraint that we have is here. It's easy to see because the left hand side is 2 times x1 minus x2. And so this constraint is really saying all we need to do is make x1 minus x2 at least minus 1. But there's nothing that prevents us from making x1 minus x2 to be as large as we want. Because there's no bound on the value, this problem is called unbounded. And we can have an unbounded problem for minimization problem as well. For example, this minimization problem is unbounded. There's no lower bound that you can impose on x1 if the only constraint that you have is this. The constraints of a linear programming problem must be of one of the following forms. So the left hand side is of the form a1 times a variable x1 plus and so on up to an times a variable xn greater than or equal to some real number beta or less than or equal to some real number beta or is equal to some real number beta. And the function that is to be minimized or maximized is called the objective function and it has to be of the following form. An assignment of values to the variables that satisfy all the constraints is called a feasible solution. For example, if we set x, y, z to 1, 1, 4, then this assignment of values will satisfy all these constraints here. And so this is a feasible solution. The set of all the feasible solutions to a linear programming problem is called the feasible region. And evaluating the objective function at a feasible solution gives you the objective function value of the feasible solution. A feasible solution that gives you the minimum possible value in the case of minimization is called an optimal solution. And an optimal solution for a maximization problem is a feasible solution that gives you the maximum possible value. And the objective function value of an optimal solution is the optimal value. It is possible for a linear programming problem to have no solution. In other words, it is possible to come up with a set of constraints no assignment of values to the variables will satisfy. Here's an example. Minimizing x subject to x at least 1 and x at most 0. There's no number that is simultaneously at least 1 and at most 0. So this problem has no feasible solution and we call this problem infeasible. One of the most important results in linear programming is the following theorem. And it's called the fundamental theorem of linear programming. Suppose that LP denote a linear programming problem, then exactly one of the following is true. LP is infeasible, LP is unbounded, or LP has an optimal solution. Clearly, if the problem is infeasible, it cannot be unbounded, and it cannot have an optimal solution. And if a problem is unbounded, it has a feasible solution, so it cannot be infeasible, and it cannot have an optimal solution. The difficult part of this theorem is, if it's neither infeasible nor unbounded, then it actually has an optimal solution. This is really a feature of linear programming problems. For example, if we look at minimizing e to the minus x subject to x at least 0. Now we can plot the function y equals e to the minus x when x is at least 0, and it looks like this. So first of all, e to the minus x is positive, but we also know that, and we can see from this picture, it can get arbitrarily close to 0. So this problem is not infeasible, 
is not unbounded, but it has no optimal solution because zero is never attained. 